You ready? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is There's No Crying in Crochet. This is the podcast where we help you overcome your everyday crochet frustrations and we chat about true crime. We are your hosts, Biz from Busy Crochet and Debbie from Madam Stitch. I want to encourage you, if you are watching on YouTube today, that you make sure and you subscribe to both of our channels so that you know when each one of us is going to go live. We are here every single Friday at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. And I want to make sure that you also know that in our description box, we are going to have all of the links for anything that we talk about today. And Debbie, so tell me how your week went. Well, of course, it's always busy. Um, lots mm -hmm. of running around and lots of Madam Stitching going on. But this week, my daughter gave me tickets to see Sweeney Todd on Broadway. So Wednesday, oh, yeah, Wednesday, we we drive about an hour or so to get to the train station that takes us into Penn Station, and we walk to the theater. So we saw we saw Sweeney Todd with Josh Groban. Oh, wow. Um, and I don't know if you know Gaten from Stranger Things. He's Dustin on Stranger Things. Yes. He's in it with a fabulous voice. He's such a cutie. Such but a the music voice. was just off the charts. So if you check my Instagram, you'll see. Um, oh, my story's probably gone. I did Broadway crochet. I was crocheting uh -huh. in the theater because if you crochet, you just have to crochet, crochet at a Broadway show, right? Absolutely. How exciting. What did, what were you working on there? Um, I'm actually working on something that's unusual for me, a finger, I think it's fingering weight. It might be sport weight, but a huge rectangular wrap that oh. has sections of lace and solid that I'm going to mm -hmm. premiere in the fall for the fall nice. weather. It's really nice. gorgeous. It's got lots of beautiful turquoises and grays and it's mm quite spectacular my color scheme i'm a i love those color tones all right biz what how was your week my week was crazy so we missed last week um our podcast on friday because i had an emergency trip to tampa um most of you know that my daughter stephanie has lived away from us for quite some time and it was just time to bring her home so we got to go over there kind of last minute and pack her up and move her home. And it's just been a crazy week because now I'm a grandma to uh, an Alaskan Husky. I'm sorry. I, say, I keep saying that <laughs> it's a Siberian Husky and she doesn't hear She's sweet, sweet dog. Oh, she's so soft and fluffy. So loving, doesn't listen, has her own mind. Um, so we're working on, you know, obedience. Um, and other than that, uh, I can get her in the house by shaking the treat jar at her. Other than that, she really likes Always to a good go, and, go and explore. She probably gets a few more treats than she should because, you know, I shook the treat jar at her and she comes in and she looks at me like, okay, where is it? So <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're working on right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, yeah, you, yeah. And you got to meet my daughter before we started. So that's, I did. I did. that's my pretty girl that got to come home. So, um, but today... Today, today, episode three, we are going to be talking about um, and we'll be discussing different ways to eliminate stretching in crochet market bags. Um, so we've got a couple of different ways for you to do that. I'm going to go ahead and let Debbie start with it. Oh, fabulous. All right. Well, my way is one that a lot of crocheters use. I, I do a lot of bags with wide Mm -hmm. straps and sometimes just the one strap. Mm -hmm. So what I do is it's single crochet, rows of single crochet across, which comes mm -hmm. out of the body of the market bag. I don't know if I can see it here. Yeah, oh, it comes yeah. out of the body of the market bag, right? So mm -hmm. I do the strap, meet in the middle, sew the seam. And that's just a simple way to do a strap. But I discovered over the years, especially when I gave one, to my daughter-in-law to use, which it still is in use today, but it hangs really low because <laughs> that strap, you know, it's kind of dragging on the ground, especially when one of the grandsons is carrying it. So, so what I've caught started doing is 
just working a row of single crochet around the edge, about around both edges of the strap. So this is one mm -hmm. edge. This is the other edge. And it, yeah. it just it still stretches. So mm -hmm. I'm not eliminating the stretch. I'm minimizing the stretch in that case. Um, right. And it basically is just working a single crochet in the end of each single crochet row till I get mm -hmm. back to the body. And then I work in the, in the stitches on the body if there are some. And then I work right around to the, um, to the other, to the join, and then do the other side of the strap. And it's really simple. doesn't take a lot of yarn. Works up quickly. And it's just, it also puts a really nice finish on the strap because you, you don't yeah. see all the bumps in that, uh, the ends of the rows. I really, so, I really like doing that one in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when the, the, uh, the strap's a little bit wider because mm -hmm. it, it just adds this really nice finish on it. Mm -hmm. Now you've got, I love the fact that you have these one, you have two really cool ways to minimize mm -hmm. or yours actually eliminates the stretch. So yeah, the first is. one is. Okay. So the first one is top stitching between the rows, like doing a slip stitch. And I discovered this on um, the Calypso Crab, which is actually part of, let's, I know this is going to date this, but you're currently um, running a blog hop and Damn. my, my blank, my blanket, <laughs> my bag <laughs> was available on Mother's Day. So it's the Calypso Crab bag. But on the strap, what I did is I slip stitched in between each of the single crochet rows. So that. Um, like there is almost That's no solid. This at all. Yeah. And so your bag might pull a little on the bottom, but your straps are going nowhere. And when you do this one, you're going to have to kind of decide how long you want your straps to be only because without that give, you're not going to be able to slip an arm in there if you have your, your strap too short. Um, so you kind of have to decide like this is another bag. I have another one over here that has been in progress since 2018. So I should probably finish it soon, <laughs> yeah. but I have some unworked, some unworked. Well, hello. There we go. Some unworked straps. So you see where the, the single crochets are. I just go mm -hmm. into those little, those little indents in there and work those top stitches as you go. You can add them. So before Biz, I'm going to ask you a question before you get too far. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. made the comment about you don't want your strap to be too short, right? Yeah. You want to make sure that you make it long enough. Do so you have a, a kind of an ideal mm -hmm. length that you like to make when you you're know, doing that kind of strap? I'm going to say no, I don't, only because I don't think I've really thought about it that deeply. I always kind of, when I'm making a bag, I will put it on and be like, well, where does this feel comfortable? I do it a lot of myself. And I will design a lot of times bags that m make me happy and comfortable as opposed to to probably maybe outward project my thinking. But um, <laughs> because I'm, <clears throat> I like to be very comfortable with my bags. I like to be very comfortable yeah. with whatever I'm using. I don't like bags that have really super short arms. I mean, mm -hmm. you have those, I have purposes, but I, I'm not a big fan of them. So I have a tendency when I'm designing bags to just make my, my uh, straps a little bit more generous in length. Well, this is a totally different discussion. We could have a whole episode on this, but we really do design for ourselves mm -hmm. and our ideal customer in mind. And while I've mm -hmm. got the floor, I'm going to look at the comments here. The, <laughs> Debbie from Central Pennsylvania. So I'm going to quiz her about where she's from. And uh, somebody from Republic Washington. But here's somebody who said, um, I just made a strap with the length of single crochet and added four rows of slip stitches. There you go. Mm -hmm. And yours mm -hmm. are worked lengthwise. Mine are worked mm -hmm. widthwise. That's why right. mine work <laughs> that way and yours work that way. Um, mm -hmm. And someone else says no stretch. So <clears throat> there are the comments so far. Yeah. Hang on just a second. I'm going to mute because I have to cough. And we just don't need to hear that. But um, 
Yeah, the other idea that I have is um, I'm actually working on a pattern for this, but using cotton cording where this stuff, this stuff has zero stretch to it and it mm -hmm. creates a great deal of stability. So if you are looking to have a strap or even the bottom of a bag, this is something that you could very easily put in, say when you're in either the bottom of something that's kind of square, like this one has a sort of squarish bottom, you could add it along this row right here. Ooh to create a really stable base. You could add it around the top of your bag to create a really stable top. And you could add it into your into your strap to keep it from moving anywhere. Uh, I'm working, like I said, I'm working on it just because have you ever made a market bag that you put your stuff in it and the strap doesn't move maybe, but the bag is now dragging on the floor because you got you know five lemons in there. And you've got to hold your bag way up here so that the bag doesn't yeah. drag. Yep. And I, yep. love, done I that. love using cotton market, market bags personally. But it, um, I forgot to do my little banner. Um, but it, to me, they stretch too much sometimes. And you have to be yeah. really careful about the ones that you make in order to keep them from dragging on the floor. Because it's just no fun. No fun to use a bag like that. Well, I was telling you about, um, <laughs> before we started, about a market bag that I had made for my daughter-in-law. And she, mm -hmm. they use it for everything. It's just, it's a workhorse. But it has one of those seagull crochet uh, width-wise straps. Mm -hmm. And the boys use it for their video games. So think oh. about putting all of the electronic equipment in a cotton market bag. And when they were shorter, man, it was like they had, you know, this, <laughs> this bag has this great it was a hobo green, bag. trash bag, right? So that I think it would have benefited from having your, you know, top stitching on it because yes, it was, yes. oh it's goodness. so stretched out, but it still is so durable. And so, um, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't break. It mm -hmm. just doesn't break. Those crochet bags just never, I mean, they're so, they're so, um, they're versatile depending on how they're made and they just mm -hmm. last forever. You can wash the daylights out of them. It's like yeah. a, a, like a cotton dish rag. Yeah. I, I won't throw those away until they just are absolutely coming to pieces <laughs> because they're so sturdy. They are. Oh, we have, Let's um, see. yeah. Let's Stretch to the floor. I love it. <laughs> Do you have any more tips for our viewers for about their straps? Stretching. I don't. I don't. I think that um, those are really good ones. I, I'm going to have to try the, the cording because I've been struggling mm -hmm. with, you know, I try to make my designs as user-friendly as possible. I don't mm -hmm. like things that are super involved because mm -hmm. I just don't have that brain bandwidth. Mm -hmm. um, so I want the same thing for the people who um, want to make my designs, mm -hmm. but I love, I would love to have stability at the bottom of a bag and sometimes even to have it be able to stand up a little bit. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm anxious to see um, how it would work to use the cording around the bottom. So you can use the macrame cotton or you can go online and Google. I went online and Googled cotton cord. Um, and I just got like the smallest that I could possibly get. I think it was maybe five eighths of an inch. Um, but like I told you before we started, I've put that where I would never lose it and I can't find it. So, um, so this sorry. Is, that's fine. <laughs> that sounds so familiar. <laughs> Yes, I it? know where that is. Oh no, I can't find it. You know, I, I mean, that's everywhere for this. And it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> I need that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is from a macrame kit that I happen to have, but it's still a decent width. So, um, but yeah, you can, this stuff is fairly easy to find if you go into any of the craft stores. Um, and then the other thing we had talked about um, before was, 
just simply single crochet around it. You don't have to do anything super fancy with it to yeah. hide it. You can have it exposed if you want. It's just a basic um, cream cotton color. Or if you are concerned about it showing, just make sure that you're using a large enough yarn and a large enough hook to do your single crochets. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds wonderful. So, yes. So today we are chitty chatting for true crime. We are going to do a TV chat about a new show for Debbie. And it's one that I've actually watched all of the seasons of. So I had to go back and watch the first episode. So I knew what we were talking about. <laughs> because it's been so long. But it is on Peacock. And it is called Buried in the Backyard. And it is a documentary style true crime show. And um, so in, and I'm going to be honest, I completely forgot what was in the first episode. I just watched it and then I've blanked out about it. Well, make sure that, I, I mean, I can't remember names to save my soul. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to talk in the abstract. Yes. I actually do remember it. Um, it was about this woman who 30 years ago had gone to a town south of Seattle to find out what happened to her father because yes. right so I remember had now. To visit them and all of a sudden just disappeared and she couldn't find mm -hmm. him he had a company in Alaska moved it to Seattle um, or maybe he left it there I don't know anything about the business but it was mm -hmm. about finding out what happened to him mm -hmm. um, at this house that he was um, living in, or his girlfriend was living in mm -hmm. was a rental. So mm -hmm. they had a number of tenants move in and move out so that you could track the owner. Yeah. So they had to go back and find this, this guy's girlfriend. And I, I couldn't believe talk about a plot twist. I know right? you think know. it's the girlfriend or you think it's the girlfriend's mother because they live together. Yeah. And the um, way that they told the story, it kind of kept you questioning a few different people. Right. Well, I would get to halfway through the show and I think, well, the mother did it. So what else are we going to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> but she didn't. No, I'm not giving away anything, but yes. um, it ended up being her son. And then they convicted the daughter, the girlfriend of the guy that got murdered mm -hmm. uh, because she actually put the idea in her brother's head mm -hmm. because he just killed his girlfriend. Oh, it was his Who wife. He had, he had just killed his wife and he was like super out there. He was like, yeah, I killed her and I shot her and I did all this. And it's, and, oh, okay. And he had just well, gotten all, or something. Well, in all fairness, he had already served his time for, yeah. for that crime. Right. right. So they couldn't convict him again for that one. So he can talk freely about, Oh yeah, I, I did that one. And yeah. I thought it was interesting that did the detective goes, you know, my experience tells me that when a person has killed someone, they're okay with killing again. It's much easier so, to kill again for sure. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was, was, it's messed up. People are messed up. <laughs> Why do we watch these shows? Because it makes us feel sane, correct? Is it? Is it? The reason? That's probably why. I, you know, because it's it's the show that I I just love. I I don't know if it's the history of it, if it's the mystery of it, it's the just kind of macabre. I'm my favorite, and this is gonna my two favorite genres of movies are horror and action. I am not a chick flick girl. I don't like watching stuff that makes me cry. So I've always wondered, is there something wrong with me? But I'm just fascinated by it. And I think it's a huge fascination for a lot of people. The true crime Count stuff. Count me in, Biz. Count me yeah. in. Because I, my favorite author, now I have several favorites now, but always and forever Stephen King, my man. Gosh, yes. He's my, he's my guy. Um, yes. So horror, yes. Mm -hmm. Although some stuff is just too much for me. So, so Stephen King I'm not really into mind... gory horror. Okay, you know, like, like I don't necessarily like blots of blood. I really like psychological horror. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Because that's what Stephen King does best. Yes. It's in and your he, head. 
Yes, he does. And so, yeah, shortly after my husband and I got married, he made me stop reading Stephen King because I was having nightmares. And I honestly have oh, not no. read, I haven't read Stephen King in 30 years. So, but I, there, I read a lot of them before he made me quit. So any of the new, have you noticed how any of the new Stephen King stories that they're making into uh, movies are actually good? Not like back when they were doing Christine and Carrie and all of those where they were like, they had that cheese factor to them. Now yeah. they're actually really good. They are really good. Um, his books went through a transformation because he was almost killed in a hit and oh. run accident. Really? And it just, it messed with his mind. So he did okay. some really weird books. I, I couldn't read those books, but he's starting to get his mojo back and, okay. um, and they're, they're, they're great stories. They yeah. just make you think it's fabulous. So like, so Gerald's got, game. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say Gerald's game. They did on Netflix. That was the first one that I ran across that I felt was an actual decent adaptation of the story into an actual movie. Because mm -hmm. before that, even like, you know, um, oh God, Pet Cemetery. That's the one. Oh gosh. It was, it was okay, but it wasn't as good as the book. Uh, I couldn't read Pet Cemetery just because oh. it's pets. <laughs> I could read Cujo, but I couldn't read Pet Cemetery. Um yeah. I did try to watch uh, the mini series and I can't remember. I think it might've been on Hulu of um, his book, 1963, which okay. is, oh my gosh, biz. I haven't seen that. Wait, we're off of our TV show, but you need yeah. to read this book. It's about um, Kennedy being assassinated. Okay. And this guy finds a portal in a diner in the present day that takes him back to the to 1958 every time he goes back oh wow and he has to live in the past to get up to 1963 and um, his goal in life is to prevent the assassination of jfk but he wow. doesn't get all the way there every time so he has to keep going back in the past wow. he ages the number of years he's been in the past in the present he doesn't age at all because in reality hasn't been gone. Oh. So he's growing. Oh, oh my gosh. It's crazy. It sounds and the, really good. The ending is amazing. The, did, did you watch the stand? Yes. The miniseries. The book. Yep. What, what did you I think did. of the miniseries? I'm always more a fan of the book than I am the, the TV version because yeah. they have to take too many liberties. I agree. I think the way that they portrayed the, um, and I can't remember what it's called, but the sickness, the illness that everybody ended up mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. was so much better written in the book. It was so yeah. much better. Like it was vivid and it, it's, I, I don't know what they were doing, but it wasn't as good as what he wrote. Um, but the one that I just watched yesterday uh, is called Cell. And it's got John Cusack in it, and it is available, oh. I believe, on Peacock, possibly Prime. But E A L L, yeah, and it's based off of a Stephen King. So they may have like changed the title to not match his story, but it's about um, how cell phones. There's a sound that gets transmitted through oh. cell phones and yeah, messes yeah, yeah. with everybody. Mm -hmm. Very good. I thought it was very good. Did you read the book? I didn't read the book. And like I said, I haven't read any Stephen King, but I thought I always, um, I, I will watch a Stephen King adaptation on film and kind of decide whether or not I would want to read the book based on how well they did with the, so somebody who hasn't read it, I thought they did really, really well. It was an engaging story. However, I can't, I can't assess it fully because I didn't read the story. I tried to read it. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the few books that I actually put aside. Okay. I, de I can't remember. It's been a while, but I can't remember why it just didn't appeal to me. Didn't click. That maybe the story was too hard to follow or 
there was something about it I just didn't enjoy. So I'm mm -hmm. anxious to give that a try. Yeah. Um, Cause hopefully, you know, it'll be vintage Stephen King. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do. I, I was actually just peeking at the comments and somebody had asked if the stories are real, and that must be about our Peacock show that we were talking yes. about. Cause we got yep. off we on did. a tangent, but um, yes, every single one of the stories on the buried in the backyard show are real stories of people who were buried in somebody's backyard. Now I will say, because I have seen all of the seasons of it, it does branch off and buried in the sand, buried in the woods, buried somewhere else. But there's like four different places where people have been randomly buried. And all of the stories are very, very good. Um, they, they make it so that you know, they don't just spill the beans right away. It's a mystery. And, you know, if you're like uh, Debbie or myself, you try and figure out who did it. <laughs> and there's you know, a sometimes twist. You're right, sometimes you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not terribly good at figuring out what the twist is. Yeah. Um, unless it's fairly obvious. But I'm sorry for the little dog barking in the background of my house here. <laughs> I would. It's okay. <laughs> hey, Frank. <laughs> Sometimes it gets there to be quiet. Um, but yeah, so I would, I would highly recommend that. Uh, and I would recommend if you haven't, maybe, maybe the, the show would be more interesting than the book itself. I would try so. Sure. You know, when in one of your free super relaxed moments when you're not doing anything right mm, yeah yeah <clears throat> well the other caveat is it has to be something my husband will watch too oh okay and although i did watch buried in the backyard by myself i just caught you know caught a moment because i don't i don't know if he would enjoy why are we looking at people's bones i don't yeah. understand <laughs> See, my, that's why I watch this stuff in the afternoon because my husband has decided that I'm doing research to try and figure out how to kill him. And I'm like, I don't have enough, <laughs> I don't have enough strength, energy, or desire to do any of that. I okay. Now like, that's awesome. <laughs> I just like finding out about other people <laughs> and, you know, and maybe it, it is a little macabre, but oh, well, I'm going to get over it. You know, um, I went to but see yeah, Sweeney oh Todd God. on Broadway. Talk about macabre. Oh my yeah. Lord. Yeah. I Everybody dies at the end. It's like, yeah. oh, well, this was an upper yay. Did Love you it. see the Johnny Depp movie version? I've no, only it, no, uh, no, I'm a, I'm sorry, Biz. I'm a musical snob. And I, I, I <clears throat> that's all I'm going to say. No. <laughs> It's okay. I've only ever made it through part of it. And it's almost like as soon as they start singing, they go, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> Just can't do it. Well, Sweeney Todd is, it, it, it's actually performed both on musical theater stages and opera stages oh, because really? the singing is that, um, is, is that difficult. So you need, you really need singers who have chops. You can't. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I saw that Johnny Depp was cast as Sweeney Todd, the first thought was, oh, that music. Oh, please. Oh, that's just, I like Johnny Depp. Yeah. But, ooh. Not everybody belongs in everything. No, really not. So. Mm -mm. But I, I'm glad to hear that Josh Groban did it because I bet he did an amazing job. I had my doubts because I don't necessarily enjoy him as a pop singer. Um, oh yeah, no. But he was fantastic. He was, um, you could tell that he had trained and worked mm -hmm. really hard and was spot on. Oh my gosh. He was just, oh, it was so good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, at least it was worth your time going, right? I haven't seen one yet that wasn't worth my time. You know, I haven't been to theater in so many years. I mean, years. So hopefully I'll get to go again. 
you should do that. I think we have true crammed ourselves into a circle here. Biz. We have, we have. definitely. So we'll have to decide so, what our next one is going to be. So cotton cord is more for more than just tying up your, your victims. Um, <laughs> you can use it for the bags you put over their heads too. So. Okay. So where's the banner for that one? Cause I would love to see somebody get to this point. You can oh my God. <laughs> I don't have one. I should make one real quick. You should. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about what we're going to talk about next time. <laughs> yes. We are yeah. going to next Friday. We are going to talk about how to stay motivated when you have a large project, how to avoid that um, that squirrel um, distraction where, oh, you see a shiny new project and you want to work on it. So you put mm -hmm. stuff aside and now mm -hmm. your work in progress basket is yay high. So we're going to talk about ways to stay engaged with that large project or just any project. Yes. <laughs> Where's the banner biz? Right there. <laughs> Cotton cord is for more than just tying up your victims. Right. <laughs> oh, I think that might have to be the end of this podcast. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay. So I hope everybody got some good information from today. Uh, if you have any questions, absolutely make sure that you leave uh, a chat or, a, you know, a comment. We will get back to you. Both Debbie and I will have this video available on each of our YouTube channels. And like I said, uh, make sure that you click and uh, follow each one of us or whoever you like, you know, no hurt feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, make sure you follow us so that you know when we go live again. And uh, which is going to be every Friday at 1 p.m. Every Friday. And if we don't go live on Friday, we will certainly let you know yeah. on Facebook that sort of thing. We're, we're trying to get better about everything. <laughs> we're it's just a big job it. is it's a it big is. job. It is, but we're having a good time. So we are. All right. Everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.